Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to Keeping It Queer with Naveen Narona. Hello and welcome everyone to Keep It Queer. Here with me in the studio is Sonal Gyani, who I just learned has a uh, a unique surname i used to call you jiani all my life and now i've learned it's gyani mm. which is new information so hello sonal well, <laughs> welcome to the show <laughs> like gyani ice creams so. yeah like uh, gyani ice creams how are you how are you doing i'm i'm doing really well today all right so for those uh, who can't see sonal because everybody is listening to this uh, sonal has an infectious smile by the way she just she brings up an entire new aura to the room by just smiling and uh, i i recently met you at a gazi event mm. where i was performing and uh, and we took a selfie for someone and uh, <laughs> that's how we got talking yeah, yeah. and uh, like your history is really interesting i i've read a lot about you i've heard a lot about you but to have you in the studio is a real real honor for me so thank you for joining us sonal yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so for those who want to know a little bit about sonal uh, she is a bisexual activist she is uh, famous for appearing in a tv show she's been in a documentary and a movie she is a gay rights advocate and helps out a lot of young in questioning teens and she's a overall badass so to get into this episode we'll learn everything about sonal and her life so sonal let us uh, first get to your childhood tell us all about how you grew up what happened so i think uh, what i remember i'm born in pune but i'm brought up in goa uh, hmm. this is because my father he's he was in the defense and uh, you know in defense you have like lot of transfers so mm. the, the one where we kind of lay, stayed the longest was in goa and i was brought up in a kv oh. kendriya vidyalay <laughs> But what part of goa was this uh, vasco oh, nice. uh, which is was uh, um, i think uh, from the age of 5 till about 20 i've been in goa and uh, i've studied uh, in kvs over there and then followed by my college hmm. and but uh, i in goa Uh, if I to tell you a little bit about my family, my I have a twin sister by the way. Oh, nice! Like who's who's strange, <laughs> and I have an elder brother, and I. What uh, are the odds? <laughs> This is like <laughs> twin sister strange. <laughs> uh, actually, I've got to know after. I mean, uh, my twin sister name is Rupa, hmm. and uh, I actually got to know since because we have, we are twins. After that, I've really been researching and find that there are a lot of twin pairs. Hmm. Uh, who are like uh, you know one is gay and one is queer hmm. i sometimes feel like in sita or geeta also <laughs> <laughs> maybe one of them could have been queer yeah and yeah uh, ek, uh, i think growing up in goa what was uh, different to, uh, compared to is like living here in mumbai is that there was no talk about lgbt at all hmm. i mean i uh, and i actually didn't really feel out of place also i mean i didn't really question my sexuality or anything uh this was because i was having crushes on both g- guys and girls True. so it wasn't like i was left out of the conversation hmm and actually in my meri school to aisi thi ki ladkiyan chodo ladkon ke bare mein bhi baat nahi hoti thi theek hai so you're not allowed to even talk about guys so i was not talking about anybody to oh, feel that oh i'm not getting space to talk about anybody hmm. but my sister and i we had this ritual where we used to talk in the night to each other about everything oh those bedside ha bedside pillow pillow conversations every day every day theek nice. hai So as we started growing up, sixth, seventh May, we started uh, feeling the need to let's talk about the crushes. So very uh, slowly, slowly we did. And there was this one girl in school whom I really liked. Okay, mm-hmm. so I would talk about her in the night. And then one one day, suddenly my uh, sister she turned around and said, "Ki uh, you know, Sonal, why do you keep talking about this girl? Mm-hmm. Like, are you a lesbian?" <laughs> and she this was when you were in in seventh standard. Seventh standard. Yeah. Oh, so she so she had an idea about. Yeah. But me, I pura din me agar ek hi ladki ki baat karungi to bolegi na ki like kya? What are you? Are you lesbian? And she started laughing. Correct. But for me, like it was. There's only so much moment. threshold you can have before. Yeah. You're like, hey sister, <laughs> let's have a conversation about this. So no, the thing is that no, actually I didn't feel like I could have a conversation. I suddenly realized that it's a joke. Hmm. Hmm. And whatever it is, I don't want to be a joke. Correct. Right. So then, what would happen that we would continue talking. So if say it was a one-hour talking time, then fifty-five minutes I would talk about my guy crush, and I'd leave the five minutes for the girl, so that it's not obvious that I, I want to talk. And in this one hour, did she get a chance to talk about her crushes? Uh, <laughs> just... Yeah, ma- I think Rupa talked over me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Continues to. Okay. But yeah, both of us. But itna tha ki mujhe feel nahi hua ki main wo ladki ke baare mein baat kar sakti thi. So majorly, my school life was such that where 
मतलब एंड ऑल्सो आई थिंक अच्छी बात ये भी है कि जब आप किसी चीज़ के बारे में बात नहीं कर सकते हैं वो उतना ज़्यादा इंटेंस हो जाता है तो द वॉट आई फेल फॉर वेमेन इट वॉज वेरी स्ट्रॉग इन इंटेंस बट इट वॉज वेरी स्टूपिड लाइक आई थिंक दैट बिकॉज नाउ दैट आई गो बैक इन लुक एट माई डायरी एंट्रीज इट्स लाइक आई लाइक दिस गर्ल बट आई एम नॉट लेसबियन आई आई लव यू आई लव दिस वन आई लव दैट वन बट नहीं इनफैक्ट mm. अच्छी भी बात थी क्योंकि देवर दीज गर्ल्स हु वर वेरी क्लोज फ्रेंड्स एंड आई वुड हैव अ क्रश ऑन देम एंड आई डेंट इवन फ्लिकर एंड आई लिड इन वाइल गिविंग देम लव लेटर्स सो आई डेंट थिंक दैट यू नो इट इट वुड मीन समथिंग एल्स लाइक आई डेंट हैव अ कॉन्सेप्ट ओनली आई डेंट थिंक इट डेंट अकर टू मी दैट इट कुड बी अ रिलेशनशिप कुड बी पॉसिबल हाउ देयर रिएक्शंस व्हेन यू गिव देम लव लेटर्स दे वर वेरी हैप्पी दे सेड आई लव यू टू एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट या आई थिंक दैट्स दैट्स मच इजियर फॉर गर्ल्स नो लाइक यू कैन बी लाइक हा आई लव यू एंड या बिच आई लव यू टू एंड ओके इफ गाइस डू दैट आई एम लाइक आई एम गोना किक यू इन द बॉल्स दैट्स हाउ गाइस लाइक दे हैव वेरी दिस दिस माचो इंस्टिंक कम्स इन विद द प्यूबर्टी सो लाइक एंड एंड फॉर मी स्पेशली लाइक इफ गाइस वुड कम एंड टच मी इन वियर्ड प्लेसेस लाइक आई वाज आई वाज अ बिग किड सो दे वुड जस्ट कम एंड यू नो वॉबल माय बेली एंड आई लाइक आई फील हैप्पी एंड देन आफ्टर अ वाइल दे वुड बी फीलिंग ऑकवर्ड कि ओ दिस गाइस लिटिल गॉड लिटिल एक्साइटेड I think women mind. were touchy feely and it was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. मगर मगर हाँ ये भी होता था कि they would have of course boyfriends right mm. and one would feel jealous but you True. couldn't really say why you feeling jealous mm. you know I mean you could find a lot of problems with <laughs> boyfriend mm. but you couldn't put your finger on it and say this this is the reason. and then of course after that i went to college and uh, was college, college also in goa or? college was also in goa okay. but uh, there was a lot of filtering in uh, of mumbai people people i studied in ihm oh nice uh, which is a hotel management institute and uh, you know the entry is through it's a overall overall uh, all through the country yeah. ha through the country so a lot of people from different places came in and the culture in my college was very different suddenly mm. where you can talk to boys and girls people had boyfriends and girlfriends true so that's when i made my first boyfriend and in It took me some time, but my first girlfriend also. Oh, and both not at the same time. I'm no. <laughs> तो दैट्स द मोस्ट कॉमन नोशन पीपल हैव कि हां बाइसेक्सुअल्स कैन डू एवरीथिंग दे वांट दे लाइक हैव द लग्जरी सो या यू नो यू कैन चूज व्हेनेवर यू वांट इट्स अ स्विच सिस्टम सो हाउ डू यू फील अबाउट दिस काइंड ऑफ स्टीरियोटाइपिंग आह आई थिंक इट वाज इट्स वेरी प्रॉब्लमैटिक एक्चुअली बिकॉज़ इट्स इट्स I mean, if I put put a straight person in the same place, hmm. I can also say, oh, you 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 can technically fall in love with two people at the same time, right? Zaruri nahi hai, but you choose to be monogamous. What you choose to be is monogamous, True. right? In your head, what are you? So the thing is, like, it's not necessary that I am going to be attracted to both at the same time. There are a lot of bisexual people who. want to be with just one person and mm. who are want to be with more people just like there are straight people who can be with one could be with more True. and i don't think there's any problem in people wanting to be with more more than one person so you had a uh. boyfriend first and then a girlfriend, girlfriend in college yeah. so how did you meet both of them both actually in college and uh, the guy of course he he really was uh, <laughs> i think he really uh, tried to pursue me Okay. So that was nice, <laughs> and I had a lot of resistance. Yeah, tension. But I resistance tha mera initially for him, but mm. uh, oh, like he really wanted to win my heart over, so that was nice. Mm. Uh, the girl was almost like it was the ending of my college, okay. and um, uh, I wanted to pursue her. <laughs> <laughs> so which vicious is cycle like, yeah. of life comes to an end. And, and it was the first time in my college that I found somebody who loved me back, and oh, who she actually kissed me. So I that is when the. Mm. possibility occurred to me that oh you know Current. i i can i can be kissed by a girl <laughs> sweet and like it <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, this was how old were you when you leaving college i think 18 19 hoga so did you come out by then or how was it no so the thing was i was very much in the closet with that girl but uh, there was a very bad incident in my college which kind of forced me to come out mm-hmm. uh somebody took a photo of us and he they started uh sending anonymous messages to all my batchmates okay. saying that this girl and me are lesbian and then later my f- an anagan anonymous account put a photograph and of hers and mine on a social media site so that time there was this site called awkward which was very popular hmm. so they put a photo up with me and there was a poll saying you know these people are lesbians and what do you think about it and no. by the time i came in there there were like 13 14 people who had voted on it And when I tried to tell the admin that please remove it, he said no. I think the people in the college are very interested. It's an interesting topic. क्या बात होगी? तो नहीं मेरे को भी उसको थोड़ा समझाना पड़ा. But तब तक damage was done. So she didn't want to be with me or anything. Didn't want to pursue anything. And then she moved on to another guy. And so that was also the first time somebody broke up with me like that. Okay. So it was very very tough for me. And in that moment where I was very suicidal. 
Hmm. I try to do stupid things, not stupid things, but okay, things uh, suicidal just. And that's when one of my friends, uh, my batchmates, I kind of came out to her, who told me that you should tell your mother. Hmm. Uh, she told me that her mother is a teacher in uh, Bombay, and uh, her mother has met a lot of people like me, and parents do understand. Hmm. Like my mother seems like an understanding person. Why don't I talk to her? Hmm. And uh, that's when I came out to my mom. Okay. And uh, and you were like eighteen, nineteen till then. Eighteen, nineteen then. Okay. My mother's reaction was that uh, I mean, I, I when I came out to her, I came out about both, of course, hmm. not just you know being with girls, but hmm. about being with boys also. True. So for her, it was like double whammy. What's going on? But she said that uh, because you like she, you're not. I I mean, I would say I'm lesbian. I didn't know the word bisexual. Hmm. I'd not heard of it. Hmm. So I would say I'm lesbian. So she said you're not lesbian because you are you've been attracted to men. Hmm. So maybe if you go for counseling, it will be good. But there was a lot of. Uh, Like within her, she felt like we did, she didn't raise us right, or why? Why am I going to college? Am I? Is this why she sent me to college? Hmm. And uh, so she was there for me, but I think it was very difficult for her because there was no space in Goa to talk about it. Correct. So I decided to apply for a job in Mumbai because that's when I started trying to figure out ki kaha hai community kya hai. So hmm. women ka to kuch bhi nahi milta tha. Hmm. You would see gay Bombay. That's true. No yeah. women, nothing you would find. Hmm. Uh, Because there's like a reverse sexism happening in the gay community in a, in a weird way. Yeah. If you look at it. Even now, actually, it's very difficult to find. Uh, if you're typing lesbian or bisexual, it's a bit difficult to reach the space and feel comfortable. True. And my thing was that when I saw Gay Bombay, I I I thought, I mean. Just because I'm bisexual doesn't mean that I won't have some prejudice against gay men, right? Hmm. So I thought that this is a uh, gay Bombay or spaces like uh, HST. It's on male sexual health. These are men who are extremely sexual, and I'll be unsafe in a space like that. Hmm. Like it didn't occur to me that they are like the gay is all inclusive in yeah, a way. Yeah, hmm. and also that. I mean, I had misconceptions about gay people too. Hmm. You know, just because I'm because we uh, grow up like that. We yeah, are, exactly. We are programmed that way. So I thought that that's not for me. Like, hmm. so I didn't even occur to me that I should ask them if there is any space for women. Because But even I now, feel- a lot of my a lot of my friends hmm. ask me about like the gay culture, and they are like, "What are the dating apps that you use?" And I'll be like, "Okay, Grinder, hmm. this hmm. Planet Romeo, and stuff like that." And they'll be like, "What are the girls using?" And I have, I have no idea. I've never heard from anybody. And I have lesbian hmm. friends. I have bisexual friends. But nobody's really opened up about the fact. Like where do they go to find people? And I'm like, okay, that's curious. So, so is there something that you guys? Get so to and like? actually, I uh, that time, hmm. in fact, the site exists even now. Uh, there was a site called Pink Sofa. Okay. So I went to Pink Sofa and I made an account. Hmm. बड़ी मुश्किल से. And Pink Sofa से भी पहले. मुश्किल क्यों बड़ी लेकर आए? क्योंकि uh, the thing was that uh, it uh, didn't allow you to stay on for more than three days without payment. What? And I was uh, stu- like, it allowed you only certain features where you couldn't really contact people. Oh, okay. Like you know. And but just so like I, a profile over there for everybody to yeah and there was this chat room a lesbian chat room which was UK based but then hmm. people were friends there already and I I felt there was racism there hmm. nobody wanted to talk to me okay so me in a middle of a couple of firangs and like it was not they wouldn't talk to me a very so conducive my, environment for no. open conversations I mean they were light years ahead of us yeah that's true yeah. you know so उनसे कोई ये नहीं हुई but luckily मुझे this pink sofa the last day of the the day when my whatever thing was expiring <laughs> The last day, I met somebody who told me there's this group. Hmm. You call this number. Okay. Uh, once you speak to the person on this number, they'll add you to a group. This is a group called Symphony in Pink. Okay. And I called up and they said, "Ki, you have to join. Why are you joining?" But what kind of group was this? Like, is, um, uh, they it used to a, meet up, or it was an online forum? It was a group that used to meet up, and they had a Yahoo Messenger, Yahoo group, Google oh, group, Google, Google, like Google groups. They had a Yahoo group. Okay, back in the good old days when it Yahoo was, yeah, was a big yeah, thing. Yeah. 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 And uh, the thing was that the uh, that they needed to meet you before they could add you. But I was in Goa. Okay. And you know, suddenly somebody is asking me, "Ki, how are you gay? Why do you want to join the group?" It was like a full interview, and I was like, "What the hell? I'm <laughs> saying like just add me, like you know, why why is this this excruciating yeah. process of asking me questions and all of that?" But somehow I, I this thing tidied over it, and then I got added. Hmm. And this was all happening during my college days. So because of knowing that there's a group in Mumbai, I thought that I'll take up a job in Bombay. Correct. And I shifted to Mumbai. To and you must have obviously heard that there's a better lifestyle and yeah. people are more open about. So the thing is, even then, actually, अभी तो बहुत ज़्यादा अच्छा है. But उस वक्त ना मैंने women के बारे में कुछ सुना ही नहीं था. मतलब hmm. मैंने और even internet पे sites इतने सारा नहीं था. Hmm. I could see some posts about gay Bombay parties, but that's it. Like if you're not in Bombay, you wouldn't know. But luckily, after talking to people on that Yahoo, मतलब you could get their IDs hmm. of that group, so you could chat with them on Yahoo Messenger. So I had some sense that oh, there are few people they are meeting. There are some film screenings happening, 
and uh, a few people started hitting on me also hmm. it's always my profile a picture always my a profile picture was so cute and i was like so amazing awesome that uh, <laughs> 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 so i mean yeah then that's it that's how you kind of get to know so i think because i had trouble trouble in my love life plus i had no support hmm. uh, and the only way i could feel that i can stand up to the homophobia in my college was that i say i'm queer so hmm. when people started asking me i said that yes i am and i i said that i don't know whether there's an lgbt group G, lgbt group in india or not but i'm coming out hmm. because how else will i stop bullying that's really bold like for for you someone who's from a no. from a place when this conversation does not open no. at all no. and from being persecuted by your own no. college no. mates i think you've done a no. massively amazing job at coming out like you know a lot of people no. take a lot of time and study and desensitize themselves before telling the others i think that's kudos to you man because <laughs> I can't imagine being in a situation like that being being kind of tortured and blackmailed into coming out. And that's the thing actually you know when when we are younger we don't know the places like there's a lot of crying mm. and there's a lot of guilt you feel that oh you're weak because you're crying I and mean, I went through a lot of depression during that period. Mm. But I just want to say that to people who are hearing me that uh, it's okay to cry. <laughs> it gets better. Yeah it gets better. Okay so let's see how it got better after we come back from the break so let's take a small break. Hey guys, this is Malika Singhania, co-founder of the blog Stylogram, where we cover trends, fashion forecasts, celebrity style, tips and tricks and lots more cool stuff. So tune in every Thursday to the Stylogram podcast, your weekly style telegram, giving you the latest fashion and beauty stories that are relevant to you. You can also subscribe to our show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Audio Boom or any other local podcast app. See you soon. Hello and welcome back to Keeping It Queer. I'm here with Sonal Gyani, <laughs> and uh, we were talking about how uh, you moved from Goa to Bombay to find a better life for yourself, to find a more inclusive community. So, how how old were you when you came to Bombay? Um, I think I was nineteen or twenty. Okay, mm-hmm. and how did it change your perspective about life and everything? Oh, I mean, I was like, <laughs> I was like Kulla Sat. लाइक खुला सैंड लाइक आई मेड अ लॉर्ड ऑफ गर्ल फ्रेंड्स आई वेंट टू अ लॉर्ड ऑफ पार्टीज आई डिड एवरी थिंग इन द बुक वॉट एवर आई कुड नॉट पॉसिबली डू इन गोवा दे वॉज अज दे वॉज अमेजिंग नाइट सीन पार्टी सीन एल जी बी टी सीन इन बॉम्बे आई कैन ऑफ वेंट ऑल आउट एंड आई वॉज दैट पर्सन हु वॉज लाइक प्राइड वॉक कौन जाएगा पार्टी जाना है जो काफी लोग करते हैं आई 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 लाइक 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 यू 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 कॉलिंग मी फ्रॉम इवेंट्स इफ अ पार्टी पार्टी कॉल कॉल मी कम फॉर द वाज पर्सन एंड इट इट वेरी नाइस टू मीट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल एंड बट नो इवन देन डेज भी इफ वाज इन अ पब्लिक स्पेस something like even talking about the lgbt saying lesbian or gay or bisexual or like mm. i would look around ki koi sun to nahi raha na hum kya mm. baat kar rahe hain just not even pda it's like the general tamer version of pda uh-huh. matlab although you, i was like all this oh i'm so free i wasn't really free mm. you know um so yeah bombay was nice like that because suddenly i was like oh there's a possibility and everything mm. and then uh, the 2009 uh, verdict also came out true so that was also very nice but during this time um, when i came to bombay um i had a lot of in the hotel that i joined so i decided to join a hotel which was in bombay hmm. i got to know that uh, the c- hotel is from seniors i got to know that it's very lgbt friendly hmm. so i joined the hotel because of those reasons Hmm. But it turned out that it wasn't. It was pretty homophobic experience for me. When can you name the hotel? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's the point? What's the controversy? जो जानते हैं मुझे वो जानते हैं. अच्छा. First letter बता दो. T. अच्छा. हो गया. इसलिए वहाँ पे terrorist attack नहीं हुआ. T के नाम के कितने सारे terrorist attack नहीं हुआ था वहाँ पे. Oh. Oh. नहीं 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 � Uh, so I think what was nice about the workplace was that I suddenly had financial freedom, hmm. something which is not available to most women. I had financial freedom. I had the freedom to choose my time. Hmm. Uh, so those things were very nice. And I think that um, it was also nice to meet so many people in the in my hotel itself. It made me more confident of my, uh, let's say, efficacy. Hmm. Um, but yeah, over a period of time, I started feeling distant from my colleagues. 
बिकॉज यू नो आई मीन ऑल दिस क्रैप पीपल टेल यू राइट डोंट टॉक अबाउट योर सेक्शुअलिटी इन योर वर्क प्लेस वाई डू यू नीड टू जेयर गे बट द थिंग इज दैट इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल टू बी इन अ वर्क प्लेस एंड नॉट टॉक अबाउट योर लाइफ लाइक इवन इन कैजुअल कॉन्वर्सेशन पीपल टॉक अबाउट द पेरेंट्स दे गर्ल फ्रेंड वॉट आर दे डूइंग ऑन द वीकेंड I just suddenly found myself substituting everything or the pronouns with a male one. True. So, I made my my girlfriend ko boyfriend banana. Yes, like it happens all the time. Even like when mm. I was younger, mm. and my friends would like look at a girl mm. differently, and I would be like, "Yeah, mm. that's nice." Mm. I didn't know what to say. Yes, how how to compliment a woman's bosom? Mm. I had mm. no idea. Mm. So, I think that also now happens. Now you have an idea. <laughs> Well, I've seen different kind of bosoms, so yeah. <laughs> as long as something is visible. Uh, but here's the thing, right? We mm. we have to sacrifice that, and that's the worst part. Why do we have to do that? Why yeah. why can't we just mm. talk about our sexualities and not make a big fuss about it? You can't like like even now if if I have to say the word boyfriend, I have to think twice before saying that because I have to gauge the room, gauge the people mm. who are there, and then understand what they will mm. react. Mm. So, do you think that makes a younger person even more scared to have a free flowing conversation i think that you know not having a community space or being inside community spaces like being in these party spaces mm. not coming engaging with community spaces mm. uh that's when you're not able to talk so comfortably like i now have been in this space for 10 years i'm in fact i'm talking very comfortably mm. now my other friends are worried ki <laughs> kahin you know and Kaya i don't karin. care because mai kahin bhi ja ke ab to mai kahin bhi ja ke bol deti hu mujhe matlab koi i'm not even thinking about it but i know i was in this space where i was thinking about lesbian gay so that's why community spaces are important and i think that's what changed when i started hearing more and more people talking comfortably hmm. uh i and i think uh, after i left my i had to leave that workplace because things got very pretty nasty i uh, i was really pretty harassed in that hotel how so So the thing was that uh, because I started feeling a disconnect I'm I'm not proud of this at all but mm. because I started feeling a disconnect in the place I started bunking a lot mm. I was I mean later I was realized when I was diagnosed that I was severely depressed mm. so I didn't feel like coming to my workplace or anything like that I was quite bit shocking and all of that where my management manager called me in and said ki what is your problem would you like to talk about it mm. I didn't want to and she said no no you talk and we'll keep this confidential you can talk to me mm. and then i told her i came out to her okay. but she didn't keep it confidential what a bitch uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so the thing is at least. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that it then it uh, you know abhi come on agar aapke hotel mein koi lesbian hai to ye baat thodi na chupne rahi hai hmm. so it became chai pe charcha hmm. and uh, soon everybody in the hotel got to know and uh, there was this thing that you'd had to go to the locker room and change hmm. and i suddenly found that women would start going out if i came and i was so shy as to change in one corner but i used to just suddenly find that women are going inside cubicles or things like that mm. then later on i started noticing the lifts with graffiti with my name on it so there was a penis and saying this one needs fucking and you know mm. my name and all and i was a housekeeping manager so i had to ask people to clean it and my uh, they were my juniors so it was a very embarrassing place Slimmer. and uh, i tried to tell the security manager that uh, can you find out who's doing this because it was repeatedly happening hmm. and the response to me was that uh, you know it's a lift thousands of people walk in this has never happened with any other girl we wonder why this is happening with you hmm. and i didn't know how to say i was not out i was not going to be able to say it and then i had a very serious incident when i was being uh, um, so one of my batchmates came up to me and said that to- she was the one who told me hmm. that you are being discussed a lot in the kitchen and the driver uh, with- within the drivers are you queer Mm. So I said yes I am. So she said be a little careful. And then I I was being dropped I was supposed to go home in the night drop. Mm. And uh, the driver it was just me and him because uh, there was a recession period that time so they didn't keep the security. So I was mm. the last person to be be dropped to my house and he didn't take the turn to my house. Mm. He just kept moving ahead. And I thought maybe he'll take the next turn to my house and he he didn't. And then he turned around and he showed me a porn clip. on his phone how like this is just in the night random yeah okay. at 1:30 i'm traveling in the night and he gave this to me and i just got i i became blank hmm. i was like this is not happening to me uh, there was no reaction i just became blank and i took the phone and i just gi- i just gave it back to him hmm. but what i did was that uh, i mean i didn't even think oh i should call my sister i can get down call a cab i didn't think all of those things hmm. I just just went blank but what I did do was that there was a a McDonald's happened to be open that late at night mm. and I asked him to stop the cab 
I got down and had a cup of coffee. Hmm. And that kind of calmed me down. I went back to the cab and I told him that just drop me home. Hmm. Otherwise, I'm going to complain. Hmm. And I was very firm and assertive. So he dropped me home. Weren't you scared like this man is literally yeah. showing you a porn clip? Yeah. You could have acted out in any other way. Yeah. Because... M- I was blank. Yeah. I mean, I was I was so scared I went blank. Okay. Uh, so anyway, he dropped me home. And then the next day when I uh, complained to the duty manager, he told me that this is very strange that you're saying this about him because we've never heard of anything like this. So they're not even believing you. No. That's stone cold. That's terrible. And then after that, even though it was late at night, I started taking the bus. But then beyond a point of time, I was like, I don't want to do this. Hmm. Why kill yourself from the inside? Yeah, so I said, just fuck it. Hmm. I will do something which I wanted to do, which was filmmaking. I'll get out of here, do Hmm. other things. And around the same time, after I quit, the 2009 judgment came out. And that's when I started feeling the need to be doing more LGBT related stuff. Hmm. So I wanted to be part of the films, people making stuff on queer issues. Hmm. Um, and that's when I got to know that uh, the Humsafer Trust was looking at some assistants. Hmm. And I had by then worked in a few, one or two films as an assistant. Okay. So they were looking for assistants and that's how I kind of joined them. And Humsafer Trust is a beautiful organization where they reach out to yeah. young, in question uh, LGBT people. Yes. Uh, they also help with HIV positive uh, individuals. They do a free blood test for those who can't afford yeah. to. And I think uh, it's one of the most important organizations the city has in terms of LGBT rights. So the Humsafer Trust has been around from 1994. I had mm. heard about them when I was in school. Mm. Uh, some, I mean, they had a branch in Goa at that time. Mm. And uh, somebody told me, oh, we went to this trust and there were gay people. That's the first time I heard the word Hamsafar, but I never approached because I thought it was about men. Hmm. Uh, but then Hamsafar, they had a screening, which was a screening for women. Hmm. So that's how I ended up in the space and started meeting more people. And then people, they knew about me wanting to, so they got me in. Hmm. And uh, the Hamsafar Trust, uh, that time... Uh, um, of course, they are very well known for HIV related work, but they are mm. also known to specifically speak about LGBT mm-hmm. issues and providing and community a lot of spaces, events as well, yeah, to yeah. help people, you yeah. know, come together and be yes. using their talent as well for other stuff. Yes, yes. So I joined their advocacy division. I started first working as an assistant, and so the thing was that they had this film going, uh, which was the uh, oral history project, which was recording people who are activists and who are out, mm. and listening to their stories. I changed completely because mm. these were twenty people who made a change to the LGBT movement. They're the reason the movement is the way they are. Mm. And listening to their stories live and their whole life live Mm. over and over again because I was transcripting and things like that for Mm. a year. It just changed me completely. I just suddenly felt, oh my God, I am now out doing all of this after the Delhi High Court judgment. Mm. These people are doing it before that. True. They've been doing for the last 10-15 years. Then Mm. why am I not doing anything? So that's when I thought that I need to create spaces for younger people, Mm. for women it's possible. Because and they should not go through what you yeah. went through. Because and I should idea. be out. Like hmm. these people could be out. It was tough for them also. I can also be out. Hmm. So they were real role models. So hmm. then that's when I was like, no, I need to be doing more. I'm a young person. I have the energy. Hmm. I have the capacity. I have the willpower. I should be doing more, you know. Uh, I mean, I was like, we are not doing anything age group. We are not doing anything in our age group. And there was nothing so that's how we started the youth group Yariya hmm. and we set up Omang which was a LBT support group and things hmm. like that. I never left Hamsafar. They kept changing me from project to project. Correct. I didn't leave. <laughs> and I f- then full time, over a pe- it took some time that you change gradually. I first was very fearful of talking to the media. Hmm. Then slowly I started talking to the media. Then I started talking to some ba- people in my family. I came out to my mother. and uh, Mother was already ho gaya tha. Hmm. came out to my father. But your mom kept this in for all these years? You didn't yes. Tell. My father was very upset about that. Then your mom should meet my mom because my mom <laughs> could not hold it in for two days and just told everybody. Uh, but here's my concern, right? Uh, like, this is what I have read a lot about and uh, I noticed that how, like, if a man comes out as gay, uh, he still is a man and no one really messes with him. Uh, you know, like, in, in a public... Uh, place or in, in a mm. in an environment where mm. there is more hostility there will be little less hostile towards a man when compa- compared to a woman yeah. because you can physically assault a woman and she can't fight back that's the mentality that yes. we grew up with so mm. weren't you scared at that point ki someone will, you know, mere saath, jo because mere... there have been cases of acid attacks and rape and, yeah. and what not just to like exact revenge for what I don't know but Naveen mere saath jo college mein hua, I saw it as a repetition in my uh, hotel also hmm. 
I just suddenly realized that if I don't come out, hmm. how do I address the bullying? True. I mean, closet me, reke. I'm un- more under vulnerable because I'm not talking. How do I say that this is happening to me? Hmm. So I have to own it, and I I did, and that's the only way you can handle it. Or if you come out in your workplace, then you can say, oh, you know, he's a homophobe. No, Abhi tum chup karoge to tum kabi point nahi kar sakte ho. Call them out. Ha, you can't call yeah. them out. Hmm. So and nor can you have a conversation also, na? Like hmm. if you are in the closet. लाइक ऊपर ऊपर से तुम्हारे फ्रेंड्स बात करेंगे डिस्कस करेंगे बट क्या है कि अगर तुम क्लोजेट में हो तुम्हारे फ्रेंड्स तुम्हारे लिए किस बात का स्टैंड लें इफ दम सम होमोफोबिक थिंग गोइंग इफ समी इज डिस्कसिंग यू एज हो ही इज अ गे चैप बट ही इज नॉट लाइक ही इज ही इज प्रिटेंडिंग टू बी स्ट्रेट समी इज मेकिंग जोक्स अबाउट यू हाउ कैन यूर फ्रेंड स्टैंड अप फॉर यू ऑन द कॉन्ट्ररी इफ यू आर आउट इन द वर्क प्लेस एंड समी इज मेकिंग अ स्टूपेड जोक अबाउट यू समी विल स्टैंड अप एंड से यू नो यू आर बींग होमोफोबिक because they yeah, know you as a person yeah. your sexuality exactly. comes second you as a person matter to them yeah. so once they know you for who you are they they don't think about the other parameters yeah. it just becomes a regular yes. conversation yes. and that's a good thing i think a lot of these younger mm. uh, straight folks <laughs> i like to like put them mm. under mm. bracket of straight folks but yeah so like a lot of them are now discussing homophobia are now realizing that some of their closest friends could be gay yeah. and some of them are like even our parents could be gay we don't know because they were forced into marriage at a younger age and the cycle can continue so we have to break yeah, the mold and the other thing like see with straight people there is really no need for them to engage to lgbt issues ab hmm. aap child issues ke child exploitation ke bare mein kyun aapko affect hi nahi kar rahe hmm. frankly yahi hai about heterosexual people hmm. jab tak unka bhai behan ya uncle ya auntie ya unka best friend will not come out hmm. they are not going to look at the issue true it's not i mean it's not affect them i mean unless you are somebody who is really reading up politically inclined and things like that even then hmm. you know you cannot really get the gravity of things till it's a closed one who comes out true and it's important close people close ones come out then you realize oh this is not some random people jinki baatein ho rahi hain jo random you know hmm. kuch ho raha hai yahan pe we you know have them. to count yeah, yeah. it just changes dramatically when somebody you know so when you work for hamsafar right okay. and you said you advocated for rights yeah. uh, so what are the most difficult cases you have dealt with because i've heard stories a lot of uh, my friends told me that you know sonal is actively involved in helping people out who are in a fix so Sir. give me some of the examples yeah so see the thing is at the hamsafar trust with time because i was very out and things like that they made me the advocacy manager and that's mm. when and especially after the supreme court verdict mm. uh, i full time got into helping people in crisis situations so the crisis it when i say crisis situations i mean situations where they feel unsafe mm. so there were different kinds of situations but the most uh, the ones which i was uh, which needed a lot of attention and were not being paid attention to which i really dealt with a lot was extortion and blackmail hmm. uh because the extortion started really spiking up okay like people there were these gangs who continue to operate in bombay also who will find someone who's not out but is on the group and they use these dating apps to they track fi- people they on the dating apps they'll hmm. find you hmm. they'll make you vulnerable and they'll figure out where your house is and all of that one person will come to meet you but then three four people will land up mm. and then they will be like you know they know that you're not out so they will be like okay and you're not connected to anybody so they'll be like okay you have to give us this money otherwise we'll call your workplace or we'll call you know that is the like the, the worst part of humanity is like and it won't stop it'll keep yeah. going and then they'll call you when such things are over the top so i used to like specialize in those kind of cases to help them to you know first provide them counseling because it's a traumatic situation mm. but then followed by that to go to the police station and help them lodge complaints and then follow up with police do the cops yeah. also help or are they no so cops are like i go to actually sabke sath hi aise but mm-hmm. they thode se uh, push hawaii. karna padta hai without political support and media support and mm. lawyers is mm. difficult to register a case mm. but once you have that then it's it's, it's possible and i've seen people jo bahut dare hue the जो उनके फैमिली को कुछ नहीं मालूम कुछ नहीं मालूम है दे हैव चेंज कम्प्लीटली आफ्टर ऑफ रजिस्टरिंग द केस एंड पीपल हैव बिन बुक्ड दैट्स वन काइंड ऑफ केसेस वेयर देयर इज एक्सट्रॉशन ब्लैकमेल हैपनिंग सेकंड आर केसेस ऑफ पीपल हु आर हैविंग फैमिली सिचुएशंस वेयर दे वांट टू कम आउट टू द फैमिली द फैमिली वोंट गेट इट और यू बीन थ्रोन आउट ऑफ योर हाउस देन देयर आर पीपल हु आर वेरी डिप्रेस्ड अबाउट देयर सेक्सुअलिटी दे आर फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम इन देयर वर्क प्लेस दे आर फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम इन देयर स्कूल कॉलेज or sometimes even internally or suicidal so there's a range of cases which i've been following lbt uh, by which i mean women lesbian mm. women bisexual women and trans men mm. their cases are more of family pressure because marriage pressure is very high mm. 
सो गेटिंग आउट ऑफ मैरिज प्रेशर और योर पार्टनर इज गेटिंग मैरिड दो काइंड ऑफ केसेस आर वेरी हाई and have you dealt with like cases abroad where indians got stuck somewhere yeah. in a so there was this one saudi case in saudi where uh, there was this person whom we got to know uh, he was there for uh, uh, workplace uh, reasons uh, but then he uh, kind of in the country it's illegal hmm. uh, anything related with homosexuality any propaganda and things like that and uh, they caught him and he was arrested and we got to know almost many weeks later through his organization somebody who didn't want to be named who hmm. didn't want the organization name to come out saying that he's in jail but how did they track him down in the first place huh? how did they track him down in the first he place he can call na he called he called the workplace they no, didn't no, like i mean the authorities who arrested they him they kind of they are they are uh, watching your internet movement and things like that oh, their that, internet that is ha uh, ha you have to be changing your vpn and things like that even then they are on those websites hmm and they are watching everything so if you are fixing places to meet and all sometimes they are on those websites hmm. fixing the meetings with you so just you like get lashes and things extortion like that. group but this is the government doing it yeah and there's no extortion they just arrest you arrest you yeah and then you are lashed and things like that so then have getting help for him getting the embassy and all of that so was he physically harmed in the process luckily for him the police was not was supportive but he got some lashes Wow. So yeah, I so think I just feel that people should be very conscious in the countries that they are going. Hmm. Everybody thinks oh it will not happen to me. Correct. But no. You yeah, know, even like in India I find that a lot of these gay men who are on dating sites like Grinder and Planet Romeo they think eh, it's not happens to other people. Hmm. But baby no, it happens to a person like you only. Hmm. Who is like okay has money because he's in a white collar job and uh not out to family. is like oh let, let me use an anonymous name nobody will come to know mm-hmm. you are the perfect catch cuz you are so anonymous so scared of your identity that you are the perfect catch if in, on the contrary if you knew an organization mm-hmm. you were in community spaces he, people would be like no it's so, it's a weird time to be alive but it's also a great time to be active yeah exactly because because of the scenario that is mm-hmm. unfolding and because we're not short of uh, information mm-hmm. like right now everybody has internet and like the major media sites will be supportive because now they are also realizing that we have to talk about this openly so we have that recourse that we can't go back we can't shut up about it we have to talk mm-hmm. so the more they try to suppress us the more we'll scream because mm-hmm. there's no other option yeah <laughs> so let's but luckily uh, in the time since the ju- judgment came out the ju- ju- delhi high court judgment to the supreme court mm-hmm. you suddenly had a huge hiv program coming in and uh, government programs becoming really big and uh, because of that the movement has become really big it's it's like a can of worms hmm. now you can't put us all back in yeah. we are out we are out we now. are out we are not going to go back into the closet those four years made us even more adamant exactly. about the fact that abhi to leh ke leke rahe leh ke rahe so because you see all these cases from all these countries so it's just like a big deck of dominoes which is you know mm. with with every country the right wing that goes mm. up and their main agenda is this only like tackling atheists mm. or tackling gay people mm. so where do you think is safety where do you think is the comfort so said that's the thing right uh, i have an interesting uh, take on this mm. i think that uh, where you feel safer is really in your head you know because for different people the threshold for uh, violence it could be different kinds of need not be physical but just silencing your voice could be a certain level hmm. um so some people are able to stand up to it so if i'm able to stand up to it i feel safe i feel like if you go to countries like canada which are lgbt friendly if i'm able to come out of there hmm. i'm able to um, access those rights so that way it's a problem in my country but having said that if i'm able to if if i feel that i don't need the legal rights as much if i stay here it's it's better for me because even the culture shop adjusting to the culture hmm. is difficult in fact one feels that oh india is regressive but no if you look at the hijra community hmm. the hijra community is existing within our society nobody really is uh, you know beating them up and all things things like that whereas hmm. if you go to countries like canada and america listening to hate crimes yeah, listening to murders yeah. 50 people just killed in 3 yes. months past 3 months yeah So and there also racism like black trans women are killed more yeah, in comparison there's a lot of racism in mm. those countries so so it's like it depends on you mm. Do you know how much can you fight for yourself and uh, i think that uh, i have always maintained this that i don't want to leave india i, I want to change my country i want it to be more mm. uh, lgbt friendly why should i go into another country it's 
it's my responsibility also to make it uh, friendly and so i think we can so how far do we think so see the thing is you have to see that our movement is only about really speaking it's like really 15 years hmm. old we are like like infant stages compared to america or canada hmm. but utne mein is 10 15 saal mein we managed to have so much conversation hmm. about lgbt there were very few people ko bhi hila diya hum log ne beech mein exactly like even hmm. if you look at the newspapers i don't think even a single month goes by where uh, something about lgbt is not being covered true right so we've made real strides and especially in the last 8 years there's a lot of movement in terms of lgbt so i think we are picking up very very fast i think that's also because we are a inclusive country hmm. a secular country so that also helps us and i think like 20 years from now i think we would have moved forward uh, definitely and we would be close to america and i have a feeling that it can be a safer space hmm. like you know people say oh bjp came and it's a homophobic government but hmm. for your information when congress came it was a homophobic yeah, was government too yeah okay so you worked with them and you sensitized them hmm. and you you managed to sensitize them to the extent that they supported you uh, you know while giving a review petition hmm. the government the health ministry they wrote an affidavit in the to the delhi high court saying that we support decriminalization hmm. so one managed to do that with the government and i think we can do it with bjp at least i have been on the ground where i have been speaking with shiv sena hmm. or been part of sensitizing uh, bjp Hmm. So if you look at ground level people, people are actually supportive. Hmm. It's really when you come down to the spokesperson, it gets difficult. But then that's when we as activists need to get together and sensitize pe- more people. More people need to come out. We need hmm. to enter politics. Hmm. We need to have an Definitely. open candidate. Yeah. It's nice to see Lakshmi hmm. um, being out there, and I think more people need to come out and become political. Hmm. Otherwise, I don't see politically we reading. But definitely, मुझे लगता है कि socially हमने बहुत बहुत ज्यादा स्ट्राइड्स आगे बढ़े हैं यू नो व्हेन द नेगेटिव सुप्रीम कोर्ट केम इफ यू सी द मैक्सिमम न्यूज़ कवरेज पीपल सेड दिस इज रिग्रेसिव सोसाइटी इज रेडी दैट फोर्स लॉट ऑफ पीपल टू नाउ कम एंड टॉक अबाउट बिकॉज देन इट बी लाइक हे दिस हैपन एंड फ्रेंड वुड बी लाइक व्हाई डू यू केयर बिकॉज आई एम गे बिकॉज दैट्स व्हाट द डील इज अगर ये 2009 में नेगेटिव आया होता पीपल वुडंट केयर दे वुड बी लाइक ओ व्हाटएवर दे डोंट केयर बट जब ये 2013 में आया पीपल वर लाइक नो India is regressive. Yeah. India is not this regressive. Mm. People had a problem with it. Definitely, you know. So that itself shows that civil society has moved forward. It's our Supreme Court who is sitting where God knows, <laughs> and I'm hoping, hoping that with the curative petitions, they will remedy the damage they've done True. and the lives we've lost because of them. You know, there have been 16 suicides mm. in Chennai from 2015 to 2016. And I thought I hope that they they kind of fix this damage they've done. Yeah, so many young beautiful lives just lost because of a stigma. Yes. Which we live in. So uh, on on an ending note, what would you like to tell young listeners if they are out there uh, hoping because some for all you know there's someone who's going through suicidal tendency right now, de- depression, uh, bullying, staunch homophobia. What do you want to tell them? I would like to tell young listeners that um, we are here. There are many of us here who are out. it gets better mm. you don't need to come out but what you could do is that uh, you can reach out and find out even if it's under the garb of pretending oh i'm straight but i want to know reach out mm. because only information and knowledge is going to give you power you know to get out of this situation and uh, in india there are many organizations spread around out different states and there is help available mm. and people wanting to support just reach out and to straight people what i want to say is that if you hear that if you hear anybody using the word gay or hijra you know as abuse manner, yeah. stop it stop stop it stand up against lgbt bullying mm. uh because you don't know who in your group could be gay and they're watching you mm. if you stand up once maybe you give the hope to many to come out True. and i just like you don't have to be an animal to st- stand up for animal rights you don't have to be a child to stand up for child rights why do you do those things you stand up for those people because they don't have a voice of their own hmm. and lgbt doesn't have a voice so stand up for lgbt you have to stand up if you believe in equality if you believe in human rights you should well if you enjoyed the show you can listen to more of it on any of the podcasting apps you like you can look out for us on audio boom pocket cast stitcher beyond pod 
But if you're looking for us on the iTunes India store, you might have a bit of a trouble finding us because of the language used on the show. So be sure to change your location and then listen to us. Uh, for now, it's me, Navin Narona, signing off. Goodbye. Thank you so much, and please continue keeping it cool. Our podcasts bring all the boys to the yard, and damn right, they're better than yours. But you don't need to stand outside in the yard. Just follow IVM Podcasts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We might be on Tinder too. Just go ahead and swipe right.